Let's talk about the elephant in the room. As an artist, so much happens behind the scenes that I don't share on social media. And so today I thought I would expose some of those things. Every artist says they need a bigger art studio. But let me tell you right now, if you have the space, you will fill it. Every single week, my art studio is back to square one and there is a mess and junk and rubbish everywhere. So every month I like to kind of do a deep clean and sort out everything that has collected over the months that I was like, oh, I'll use this next week. No, I won't. So I will go and throw it out. Every Tuesday morning, I also like to do just like a surface clean and tidy everything up. But this monthly art studio makeover was long overdue. I first had to sort out my desk where I store all my miscellaneous items, all my art books, and I had a little friend in the corner. And then I move on to my big desk and I sort out all the drawers. I get so many comments on Instagram and TikTok about how beautiful my big desk is and in fact, I did not buy it. It was actually a 21st birthday present from my great auntie and I actually have video footage on my YouTube of it arriving because she rang me up two weeks prior and said that she has got me a birthday present and I was like, what? What have you got me? And she said it was coming in the mail and for reference, I live on Kangaroo Island so transporting like a big object like this is kind of very difficult and so I was like so concerned as to what she got me but honestly this desk has changed my life literally my art practice and my quality of my art had to like when I said back then that I had to lift the quality of my art back up to the quality of the desk I meant it do you guys remember when I said that nearly a year ago it is nearly a year ago because I got it for my 21st in August um Art has definitely improved. I have been meaning to rearrange the art on my wall pan. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> Another question that I get asked is whether people see me like filming my YouTube videos, my TikToks and my Instagram reels. Uh, yeah, they do. I live opposite a 24 hour service station where there's people like going in and out all the time and you just gotta like be in your own world. Guys, I have found a way to hang up my art pieces in a way that isn't going to ruin them and, and I can switch them out. I'm genius. There's also quite a lot of traffic uh, passing by that gets quite loud. I have to pick times where there's like a stillness in the traffic or there's like no big fucking trucks passing by and I like do my voiceovers or uh, record when it's facing to the camera. But on a more serious note, I never recorded myself talking to the camera face to face for like Instagram or TikTok prior to doing YouTube because that kind of forced me to speak straight to you guys and so if you want to get started and having more confidence in creating short form videos start a youtube channel because i feel like there's less judgment over on youtube and you can post whatever you want to um while instagram and tiktok is sometimes more i don't know curated and more judgmental than youtube Good morning guys, I am so excited to be here this morning because it's quite early so I'm going to get a lot of stuff done but I am putting up new art on my gallery wall today which is so exciting because it's nice to change things around once in a while and I've also had some new art to put up for quite a while that I've just been putting off because it does take a really long time to organise everything on the walls. But before I can do that, I need to kind of deep clean. I also had a workshop on the weekend, so I need to take out all the tables and just vacuum everywhere. 
um, before I can get started on reorganizing my art. I don't really like cleaning, but I like to work in a clean space. So before I hang up new art, which is so exciting, I am going to clean and organize and shift stuff around so I have more room. So let's go do that. Now, we're gonna take a moment to appreciate all the work that goes behind the scenes. I feel like there's so much that people just don't see on the internet. And for videos that I create like a day in my life, uh, that's only one minute and it's just literally a highlight of my day. Um, even to extent YouTube, even though it's a longer form video format, there's stuff that I just don't include because you literally click off and see you later. So I have to keep it interesting and because of that sometimes I don't show everything that I do. For example, putting away tables and chairs from a workshop that I just did isn't as interesting as seeing the process behind a magical watercolour piece. But the reality is real life is not a highlight reel and there is so much stuff that takes so long that I'll never share because you know, it's just not interesting enough. Nevertheless, this video I just posted is a mix of all the stuff I probably wouldn't share. So I hope it provides a little bit more transparency in what it's like to be a content creator and an artist. It's so cloudy and I just want sunshine. But guys, I'm going to show you what I bought from the op shop the other day because it is so cute. I bought this cookie I bought this cookie gin to put like all my paints in. Look how cute that is. It was like eight dollars from the op shop. So freaking cute. Look how much room is in there. Love it. Do I need more junk to fill up the space? No, but uh you must buy. I was just about to say, when you become an op shop, <laughs> when you become an artist, the op shop is your best friend. Don't go to the art store and spend tens and hundreds of dollars on things that you can buy at the op shop. These little things were like 50 cents each, little paint palettes that I use. So freaking good. anyway I love it and I am basically I've cleaned up everything now guys and I am going to rearrange all the art on my walls <laughs> I have just finished rearranging all the art on my walls and to be honest I have never rearranged them in a more beautifully balanced way like the way I have arranged them this time every piece is well balanced as you go around the room and making art and displaying art in a beautiful way is two completely different skills like you can make great art but unless you know how to display it you might never sell it. Like, 
The way art is displayed on the wall can make or break a purchase. And the other thing that I needed to do is when you're displaying art, you need to make every art piece have its own light and have its own voice. And that is extremely hard to do when you have so many pieces that are so different from each other and you have to like only have so many hooks on the wall and you only have so much space and you need to have every art piece speak for itself and make it the highlight. Like you can't have one piece overpowering the other. And that's hard when some pieces are bigger or some pieces are more detailed. It's very hard to do, but I think I've done a goddamn good job at it. Anyway, it's by far the most inspiring way I've displayed my pieces. And I thought I would give you, it's actually really dark and cloudy and rainy. So it's a lot lighter in my gallery than what my iPhone picks up, but I'm gonna maybe show you a video when it's sunshine. But I'm gonna try and talk you through how I've displayed my art on the wall and of course other people's art. And hopefully that gives you some advice and tips on how you want to display your art in your studio. So let's go. So on each of the three walls I have, I like to have a big central artwork. On the left wall, it's Remarkable Rocks. On the right wall, it's West Bay. And on this wall, it is my portrait painting. And then surrounding them, I like to balance them in both shape, subject matter, and color. say thank you so so much for watching my video especially if you stayed this far until the end and if you want to stay up to date with all my projects in real time because these videos take a long time for me to edit and film uh, go follow me on TikTok and Instagram because I post quite consistently all my projects in real time as they happen including the painting and creating of my 2024 calendar all my big watercolor pieces and I've also just started writing and illustrating my own children's books. In the meantime, next week, hopefully next Sunday, I will be putting out a video on here all about how I opened up my own art gallery because that is my most requested video and my most asked question and also my most asked question about how I like intend to like become a full-time artist and like the strategy and the mindset that I have behind that. So that'll be up next Sunday. And I'm also like writing a book that kind of goes with it because I feel like sometimes it's good to like look back and be able to understand things that isn't in a video format. And it also goes in detail about social media strategy um, and Instagram, like TikTok, engagement, how to find your art style and stuff like that. So get excited for that one. And until next Sunday, love you guys.